Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very interesting video for you. The video is how to set up your rifle dies on a single stage press. Recently I've had a lot of comments and questions and concerns about how do you set your dies up. So hopefully I'll answer those questions in this video. I guess the first thing I want to say is people often ask me okay for example I want to load 30-06 I want to load this bullet and when I'm looking at the store or wherever you're gonna buy your dies they're looking and they see that the manufacturers offer sometimes a two die set for rifle and some other you know they might show a three die set for rifle and they ask me well what's the difference and what do you recommend well my recommendation is very simple when you reload rifle ammunition or any ammunition on the single stage press your objective is to get the least amount of press strokes per round so my recommendation is get the two die set because the second die will do two operations for you if you had a progressive press then I'd highly recommend the three die set for rifle but in our case we're going to be using a full length uh, set die set by RCBS to do the 30-06 this set will come with two dies it'll come with your decapping die which is noted by the decapping pin this die will do two operations it'll full length resize the case and it'll knock out the old primer the second die in the set is the bullet seating die which can also be used to crimp the bullet I'm going to break this video down into three sections. The first section I'm going to talk about will be how to set up the decapping die, decap and resize the case. The second section will be how to set up the bullet seating die for bullet seating. And the third and final section will show how to take that bullet seating die and establish a crimp on your bullet. So I hope this information is useful and stay tuned. Okay, so now we have our press. First thing I want to do is I want to take my shell holder and insert it into the press. I'm going to take my decapping die or my resizing die as it's commonly referred to and I'm going to raise the ram all the way up. I'm going to thread the decapping die downward until the die body touches the shell holder. Once it touches the shell holder, I'm going to lock the die lock ring. This will lock the die into place, and that's all there is to it. From here, I'm going to take a previously fired case, and that's noted by the dent in the primer from where the firing pin hit. It's already been lubed. I'm going to insert it into the press, raise the ram, and I don't know if you could see it, but the little primer flew. And so I just did two things right now. I did a decap, which I knocked the primer out and I resized the full length of the case. Now on the downstroke it's going to do a third thing and that is you'll feel your press will kind of get caught right there on the downstroke. The purpose of that is so that when you go down with your press that catch that you feel is the the uh, expander ball coming through the case mouth what that does is that establishes the correct diameter for your case mouth so we've done three things we knocked out the old primer 
we've resized the full length of the brass and we've also taken the diameter of the case mouth and made it to what it needs to be. Now one thing I need to explain is in this video all the rounds that I'm going to be making are going to be dummy rounds. They're not going to have a live primer. They're not going to have powder. They're just going to be dummy rounds. So I'll go ahead and take a second case that's already been lubed, already been fired, and I'll show that process one more time. One, two. And that's all there is to it to setting up the decapping die for a rifle cartridge. Okay, now section two, I'm going to show you how to seat a bullet. So we're going to take our bullet seating die. I already have the bullet seating stem backed all the way out. And I'm going to start to put that die into the press. I'm not going to thread it all the way down yet though. We're making dummy rounds, okay? I said that earlier. There's not going to be any primers, not going to be any powder. But in, in the real situation, when you're really reloading, at this point in the game, you would have a, lar uh, a live primer and you would be full, uh, fully charged. You'd have a charged case. So I'm going to insert the case into the press and I'm going to raise the ram all the way up. I want to lower the die body down until the die touches the case mouth. So it's very similar to the first one except I have a case in there now. Once you feel it touch the case mouth, back the die off about a half of a turn, hold the die body, and tighten the lock ring. Because this die does two functions, it'll crimp and seat. Me backing the die out that half a turn takes the crimp feature away. Lower the ram, get my bullet, and insert the bullet into the brass. Raise the ram all the way up. Nothing's going to happen probably because my bullet seating stem is backed all the way out. So I'm going to lower the bullet seating stem until I feel it touch the bullet. When I do that I'll lower the ram slightly, maybe a half inch, two inches, something like that. Nothing, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to give this bullet stem a couple more turns and I'm going to seat the bullet a little bit. From here, I want to inspect the distance between the case mouth, the top of the case mouth, and the cantilever. I have quite a ways to go. So what I need to do is I need to turn the bullet seating stem clockwise a couple of turns. One, Two. And I can get away with like two full turns because of this distance is very far. Raise the ram seat a little more. Inspect the cartridge again and see how my distance is. Go another turn or two. Raise the ram. Now you can see that we're starting to get close to our desired overall length. So the increments that I'm going to need to make on my bullet seating stem at this point are smaller increments. If I go too far, there's a very good possibility that I'll seat the bullet too deep and you can't take that back unless you bullet pull it. So from here I gotta be careful. I'm gonna go, oh, let's say one full turn because we're still a little ways away. Raise the ram and inspect the cartridge. We're getting close. Now we're, we're really close. So I'll do maybe, I don't know, quarter of a turn. See how that looks. It's always okay to go a little less than you need because you could always go more. But it's, it's, it's kind of like cutting a board if you're going to make a project. If you cut that board too short, it's just flat out too short now. But if you cut it a little bit too long, well, you can always go back to the saw and cut a little more off. That's the same principle I use when I come to seating my bullets. So here, that's yeah, pretty close. Let's go about an eighth of a turn. Raise the ram. Looking pretty close. About a sixteenth of a turn. Raise the ram. That looks really good. Let's zoom in and see that. 
hope you can see this right here that looks really nice so at this point what I would do is I would raise the ram and hold the bullet because that will keep the bullet seating stem from turning while I lock the bullet seating stem lock nut from here I would be able to seat my bullets on all of my bullets and I have a good length there a lot of people have a question for me and that is do you need to crimp your bullet or not my opinion is if you're going to be using this bullet in a bolt action type rifle there's no need to crimp the bullet because when the case comes down on the decapping die and the the uh, the uh, case what is that expander ball comes comes through the case mouth here it gives this case mouth the right diameter so when you seat your bullet there's enough case neck or case mouth tension to hold that bullet in place no problem and I'm saying in a bolt action rifle if you're going to be using some sort of semi-auto yeah you might want a mild crimp on there um, I shoot a lot of 223 and sometimes I crimp them and most of the time I don't 30 out 6 I hardly ever crimp them I usually end the process on this step but that's a little bit about um, crimping and not crimping my recommendation eh, if it's a bolt action there's no need for it if it's a semi oh yeah you might want to put a little crimp on it okay now we have our bullet we've got the bullet seating depth correct and we want to put a nice little crimp on the bullet so I'm going to insert the bullet into the press I'm going to take my wrench and I'm going to undo the bullet seating stem lock nut and I'm going to back out the bullet seating stem several turns okay I'm also going to unlock the die lock ring and go up a couple turns with that as well so with my round in the in the press I'm going to raise the ram now I'm going to I'm going to use the crimp feature of the die I'm going to thread the die down until I feel it touch the case mouth lower the ram slightly and go in one eighth of a turn increments and raise the ram I'm going to inspect the cartridge for crimp there's not enough so I'll turn the die body another eighth of a turn raise the ram check for crimp getting close one eighth of a turn that looks pretty close let's go just a little bit more about a sixteenth of a turn raise the ram let's inspect that cartridge you can see that the cartridge has a nice little crimp on it now and what I mean by the crimp is I mean that the walls of the case are rolled up into the cantilever this area of the case here okay you don't want to put too much crimp on a on a bullet because it'll increase your pressure that that bullet produces so now I like that setting so I'm going to go ahead and raise the ram and what that will do again is that will lock the die into place so that I can lock the die lock ring that's locking that crimp that we've just established in it's locked in now let's go back to our bullet seating depth we want to go back to the same bullet seating depth that we established earlier so I'm going to lower the bullet seating stem down until I feel it touch the bullet once I feel it touch the bullet I will lock the bullet seating stem lock nut okay that die is now set to do two operations it's set to uh, seat the bullet and crimp the bullet in one operation so let's pretend that this is another charged case full of powder of course I just dumped it out right <laughs> But let's pretend that's a loaded case. 
got a primer, everything, we're going to take our bullet and now with one stroke of the handle we will seat the bullet and crimp the bullet. One. Get my little rag here and then clean it up. That looks beautiful. So that shows you how to establish your crimp. Last thing that I like to do is take my case length gauge and drop my bullets down in there. I'm looking at this surface. I'm making sure that the bullet doesn't go too far down and that it doesn't stick up like this. If it sticks up something like this, that means I could have a headspace issue with that bullet and I would need to probably bullet pull it and get a better piece of brass. So that looks good. Flip it over and you'll look down in this channel area and if the brass is within this area it's good. If it's beyond this height the brass is going to need trimmed. But in our case the brass looks good. These are just dummy rounds anyway but let's look at the other one. Falls right in, the head space is good. Flip it over. Looks good on trim. So that my friends is how to set up your rifle dies on a single stage press. I hope this video was useful for you. I hope you got some good information out of it and I appreciate you watching. Feel free to subscribe, feel free to leave a comment and again have a good day and thanks again people. Bye bye now.